Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 532, Women, Orgasms, and the Hotspots. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about sex, women and sex, basically, and we're going to talk about orgasms and the hot spots, the areas of the body that women can have stimulated or stimulate themselves to, to achieve an orgasm. And those are usually not discussed by physicians and their patients unless you go to a sex specialist, which is usually a psychiatrist and not a uh, GYN doctor or a, an internal medicine doctor. Truthfully, we're not trained very well in terms of sex. We have to go after training that is specialty training after we're out of medical school and residency because I don't remember sex being discussed and I'm an OBGYN, so we deal with the outcome of sex all the time, which is babies. But now that I deal with helping people get their sex lives back, then I've had to receive special training in this. So I'm going to share some of the knowledge that I have, and hopefully that will help you with finding the areas that you feel best with when you're having sex. The area, the different hot spots, everybody's a little different. In fact, there are areas that I won't mention today that people have unusual areas that actually stimulate them to orgasm, like their ears, their toes, uh, unusual areas that are not in the pelvis. Most of the things I'm going to talk about are in the pelvis today. So um, what I'd like you to do is to kind of, if you are a female, to take a look at your own anatomy, figure out where your clitoris is, where your vagina is, where your labia are, and actually use your fingers to, clean hands, figure, fingers to feel your vagina, how deep is it, where's your cervix, and find, uh, find your G-spot, which is about an inch up on top of the vagina. So as you're sitting, it'll be on the, on the front of you, basically. So these are ways for you to examine yourself and find out where the different areas are that make you feel good. So the first and most popular <laughs> hot spot is the clitoris. And it is um, at the very top of the vagina, above the vagina, and uh, above the urethra where you urinate from. And the, um, the clitoris has a hood over it. When it is not being stimulated, this little hood covers it to protect it because it's very sensitive. And that keeps it from rubbing against your clothes. However, the hood will pull back when you're stimulated and the clitoris gets a little bit hard. It gets longer and it also um, becomes more erect, but it's like a tiny penis but it is an area where women are very sensitive and where men have found to be the easiest and the most accessible area and hotspot to actually start bringing a woman to, um, to uh, climax. But women can do this for themselves. It's right there. You can see it. You can feel it. And you can use that area to, um, to orgasm. And the reason that's important is because orgasms are good for you. They give you dopamine in your brain. They, they actually make you relax, decrease anxiety, help you sleep. Orgasms are a healthy process, and it's a gift that we can have them. So we should actually use them and understand our own bodies. You don't have to um, have a partner. You can always do this on your own to have the same healthy kind of um, benefits of sex. So the clitoris can be touched, massaged, sucked, um, brushed, any kind of friction on the clitoris uh, can actually cause it to be stimulated. That's the number one hot spot. The second hot spot is inside the vagina, and that's the G spot. It is actually 
uh, about an inch inside the, I call the ceiling or the, the roof of the vagina. If you were in lithotomy position at your doctor's office and your knees were up and your doctor was checking your vagina by putting his or her hand on your abdomen and your fingers in your vagina, it would be a up toward the top of the vagina, not the bottom. And it feels like a dime size thickness in the vagina. But it is a very sensitive area. It's an area that when massaged or when um, when you have friction from the penis actually can cause you to have good orgasms. They're different than the clitoral orgasms. They feel different. And uh, you'll know that it is a different kind of orgasm, but they can also bring a lot of women to uh, vaginal ejaculation. So you have to be aware of that if that's one of the areas you're teaching your partner uh, to stimulate. The third hot spot is, is actually the cervix. And the cervix is uh, at the very top of the vagina. You have to use one or two fingers to go to the very top of your vagina. You would do this. <laughs> and it feels like um, a round, spongy button. And that actually is the cervix that opens when you have children. And it is very sensitive to being pushed up and down or pushed side to side gently. It is not always a pleasant experience for women who have endometriosis or fibroids, but for the rest of the world, it is very pleasurable. And when you, when that is manipulated or stimulated in the right way, then you can have a cervical orgasm. And that's, that's what they call it. And it does feel different. It's a different sensation and goes to a different part of your spine and it releases dopamine in your brain like the other two. But people tell me that it feels different than the other two kinds of orgasm. So when we're um, talking about hot spots, the whole, the whole vulva can be, um, can be a hot spot. You can, it can be slapped or brushed or have any kind of friction on the outside of the vulva, and that can be with a hand or with a penis. And that can actually bring women to orgasm. So that's the fourth hot spot. And the fifth is the area or the skin that is around the anus. So it's behind or uh, it's behind the vagina. And it's right around the anus where you defecate from. So this area is very sensitive. You don't have to go in to the anus. You can just be around it. And that can cause you to have a fifth kind of climax or orgasm. That has to do with a whole different set of nerves, a whole different place it goes to in your brain, but it can also light your brain up just like the other four types of orgasms. Now, I don't want to leave anything out, and this is the, the most usual uh, areas to orgasm outside the pelvis would be the breasts. So breast sucking or, or pinching or just touching can actually bring women to orgasm. And, and then the one part we don't think about is our brain. Our brain is a very fertile field for orgasms. And you can actually talk to someone in a specific way, someone that you're intimate with, and that person can bring you to orgasm if that's what you're, you're going for. So, so that's long distance relationships, I, I suppose. But I've been told that that is some, a way to have an orgasm and some people are just as turned on by talking while they're having sex or if they're at a distance over the phone or over Zoom, I guess, um, they, they get just as excited in that way. Now, pornography is also something that couples do sometimes share that can make them turned on and can actually cause them to be stimulated and actually come to orgasm, both of them either while they're watching or afterwards. So that's something that you have to consider when considering your options while when you're having sex. Now, sometimes some of these places are a little hard to get to. So in terms of clitoral stimulation, um, a position of intercourse that would be best for that would be the face-to-face -face where you're facing your partner and um, anything any type of uh, position like that would have you uh, get 
friction on the on the clitoris. So that would be something that would be the type of position use uh, the female sitting on top of a man or squatting over a man or um, or just uh, in the old missionary position with the woman on the bottom and the man on the top. But it seems to be better when the woman's on the top for the clitoris. The, you can also have um, have rear entry intercourse with both people on their hands and knees and have uh, the penis in the vagina and the man brings his hand around to the front of the vulva and manipulates the, the uh, clitoris so that a woman can come to orgasm. That does work as well. And that's like a combination of these different techniques. Yes, the answer to your thought now is yes, you can have multiple orgasms at the same time because if you are stimulating more than one area at the same time, you can actually come to an orgasm from several areas, which makes it much more um, impressive, I guess. It, it's much more of an um, ecstatic experience, but it's not always the easiest type of um, sexuality to have because you have to you have to have good communication with your partner and you have to be able to say yes that's the spot <laughs> and yes that's the spot at the same time so uh, that is one of the things that is very essential is to tell your partner what you like what you don't like um, one of the things that people have talked to me about uh, is whether they're women wonder whether masturbating in front of their partner or their spouse is something that is bad, which it isn't. Uh, some <clears throat> men like that, some don't. So I would say if you're a woman, you would ask your partner if they would want to see you um, masturbate so that they can see what you do to yourself so that they'll know the the best spots to touch or to stimulate when they have sex with you. So it can be a learning experience or it can just be a turn on for them. Um, lastly, often women can have, uh, if they're having sex for a long period of time, at a time, a session of sex, then they can have orgasms over and over and over again. Women are multi-orgasmic if they are stimulated in the right way and they have a very short resolution time where that's a time where they rest in between orgasms. So uh, yes, if you thought you had two or three orgasms while you were in that sexual situation, you easily might have. It's not impossible for that to happen. So you can have multiple orgasmic or um, hot spots being stimulated to have multiple orgasms at one time or you can have successive orgasms as you um, spend time in a sexual way. Um, <laughs> now that we've dissected the sexual act, I, I always remember when talking about sex that there's, um, <laughs> there are two um, things that you should not, be, should not be using your brain to figure out, and that's golf and sex. So once you figured out what you want to do and you have a little plan in your head, then let your brain go because you, you'll do better and have better sex if you're not thinking about a million things. It's just like golf. Um, one of the ways that uh, we take care of our patients is oftentimes orgasms, no matter what you do, will go away when, when you get to the age of 50 or menopause or even before 50 because your testosterone goes down. So sex is a very chemical, I, I know we've been talking about sen sensitive areas and that's very physical, but, but it's a very chemical thing. You, the basic need to have sex comes from a hormone called testosterone in both men and women. So that has to be supplied before these types of things will actually work and will actually give you relief because the point of having sex is to have an orgasm. And most people feel so much better afterwards and it releases their anxiety. So um, this is something that I think is very important. And if you have tried all these things with your partner and nothing's working, then it's very possible that you don't have a high enough testosterone level. And you should see a specialist who deals with 
hormone replacement to see if your level is low and if that is why um, you're not having orgasms anymore. But next time, we're going to talk about people who can't have orgasms and how to, how to help that or what type of um, medical care or psychological care that takes. And we will do the other part, not the physical, but more of the, the mental and emotional part of um, being an orgasmic woman. So please join us then. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.